Hi, I'm Dr. Dan Butterman, and this is part three and the final part of the Azento video series. In the last part, we looked at submitting a case to Azento, and we looked at the editing and viewing software. We saw how to either request or make changes for the plan, and we also saw how to approve a plan for an Azento case. In this part, we're going to look at what happens when the Azento case shows up in the office. We'll go through the components of the kit. We'll look at guided surgery and the restorative phase as well. So about five days after you approve the case, this box will show up in your office. And really everything you need to complete the case is going to be in this one box. So from here, we've got all the components. And the nice thing about this is it makes inventory and, and things much easier for the assistant because they don't need to figure out what surgical kits they're going to need, what drills they're going to need, and if they have everything, because everything is included in this box. We've got the surgical guide. We've got the implant requested. We have the, all the drills needed for this particular case. We've got the restorative components. And in this case, we have a custom healing abutment. We have an abutment and a temporary PMMA crown. So what I normally have my staff do right before surgery is they'll remove all of the surgical burrs and they'll place them in the small surgical tray. So the Azento kit is going to come with a recipe and that recipe is going to say exactly which drills we need and what order to use them in. So the assistant will simply unpackage each drill and place them in the correct spot within the tray. So this particular implant requires the initial drill to be used first. So we'll grab that and use it from the tray. Then drill number one is to be used next. There is no drill number two for this particular diameter implant. Therefore, it's not included in the Azento kit and there's nothing sitting in the tray. And really that makes it a lot easier because when you have a large surgical kit with lots of different drills, it's very easy to grab the incorrect drill and uh, use things out of sequence. Here it's impossible to do that because there's nothing sitting in the next spot. We just simply follow the recipe and continue on to drill number three and then drill number four. Then we have the cortical drill A or B and we choose the correct one depending on how dense that cortical bone is. And then we have two optional drills. We can either use V or X, again, depending on how dense that bone is, so that we can make sure that we insert the implant with the correct torque and we don't, uh, we don't over torque that implant. And then we have the implant driver. And this guided implant driver will allow us to pick up the implant and place it guided through the surgical guide there is orientation notching on that driver that we can match up precisely with the notching on the surgical guide. So the great thing about this small tray and, and really the Azento workflow in general is that we have exactly the components we need for each particular case. We don't have more drills than we need or, some, or too few drills. We have exactly what we need to complete that particular case. And as far as processing and how to handle the instruments afterwards, the assistants don't need to worry about keeping track of how many uses each instrument's had. They don't need to worry about what order to put it back and what surgical kit it goes into because every time we start an Azento case, we have a brand new fresh set of drills that are ready to go for each case. We can take a look at the restorative components included in this case. We've got our custom healing abutment, and we also have the abutment and the PMMA temporary crown. Notice how the contours of the custom healing abutment are identical to the abutment. So if I choose to place a custom healing abutment at the time of surgery, I know that when the patient heals and I remove that custom healing abutment, the final abutment I seat is gonna follow the exact same contour. So I won't need to numb my patient There'll be no blanching of the tissue. Everything is going to fit identical to how the custom healing abutment fit. We also have our printed model and we've got our surgical guide. So the in indexing on the surgical guide is really critical for success of the case. In order to have prefabricated restorative components, we need to make sure that the implant is placed exactly according to the plan. We need to make sure the vertical position and the timing uh, rotation of the implant is identical to how we planned it. The notching that we have 
on the surgical guide is what's going to allow us to ensure that this happens. We'll be lining up that indexing with the implant driver, and once we do that, we'll know that our restorative components are going to fit. We'll try on our surgical guide, and these fit incredibly well. They normally cover about three quarters of the arch, and they have a very nice snug fit to them. Um, probably that's one of the reasons why the uh, cases are so accurate. All of the drills that are included in the case have a sleeve that's already attached to the drill. So it truly is a keyless surgery. There's no need to insert any sort of a key into the surgical guide. You simply take each drill, insert it into the guide, and you seat the drill until it hits the vertical stop. Once that happens, we know that we are at the exact right vertical depth for our osteotomy. We're just going to remove this drill and repeat the sequence through all the drills needed for the case. And then we'll use our implant driver and we'll pick up our implant. So this is where it's critical to make sure that the indexing on our implant driver, that large notch, once we see it, our implant to depth is going to line up with the notch that's indicated on the surgical guide. It's also important to make sure that our vertical position is correct as well. So typically, I'll seat my implant to the correct vertical position with my handpiece, and then I'll remove the handpiece, attach a torque wrench, and then I'll manually rotate that driver until that notch on the driver lines up with the notch on the surgical guide. You do have to pay close attention to the vertical position. The implant driver is going to have two lines that are going to determine your vertical position of your implant. The first line, as this, this particular implant was placed in the picture, that is specifically for implants of either 8, 11, or 15 millimeter lengths. If I have an implant that's 6, 9, or 13 millimeters, then I would continue to seat this implant down to the second line, and that's what ensures your correct vertical position. So we try on the custom healing abutment, and we can see how nicely the uh, abutment seats and follows the contours of the tissue. And if I want to send my patient off with a custom healing abutment, then she can leave at this point and we're finished with the surgery. I chose to do a screw retained temporary crown, so I took my abutment and my PMMA temporary and I just bonded these two pieces together extra orally just before my surgery so that it was ready to go. So immediately after placing my implant, I can just pick up my temporary and I can screw that into place. And then I simply put a little Teflon, a little composite to close up, close up my screw access hole and my patient can leave at this point. It's critical though, if you are placing a temporary on top of an implant, that uh, you make sure that the patient understands that there is no function. This is for smiling only, only and uh, not for uh, functioning with. And you do have to take care to make sure that you're making, there's no contacts on the temporary. You eliminate any excursive movements or centric contacts at all. So after the uh, patient goes through and heals, and this may be two or three months later, depending on the case, I will go back and I'll open my case for that particular patient and I'll find my Atlantis core file. When I click on that core file, I'm going to have options depending on the software that I'm using to download that file. If I'm using CEREC, then I'm going to download a DXD file. Once that DXD file is downloaded, I'll pull that into my CEREC software. Basically what this is, it's a model with the abutment that's in the patient's mouth, but that abutment has been virtually placed on top of that model. So it's going to allow me to design my crown without having to take an impression of the abutment that's in my patient's mouth. So I simply go through the normal model access steps and we can take a look at that virtual abutment that's, that's my patient is currently wearing. Now, a lot of things have to happen just right in order for us to use the core file, meaning that the tissue at the time of surgery has to heal up and end up about the same as how things were planned. Now, typically that's going to happen if I have a minimally invasive surgery, if I'm doing a tissue punch. Um, and if I'm doing something a little bit more aggressive, such as a, a full flap or immediate extraction case with grafting, 
then there's a high likelihood that that tissue position is not going to be the same as my core file. And at the time of healing, I will have to do a new impression with an Atlantis IO flow abutment. But assuming the tissue is similar to how we started, we'll be able to design our Sarah crown as normal. So my patient returns and I simply unscrew the temporary that was placed and I remove the PMMA temporary crown that was on that abutment and I take my Sarah crown that I pre-manufactured and I bond that to the abutment and torque that into place. So my patient gets to come in for a single appointment for surgery and then a second appointment to deliver the final restoration. This particular case required no additional imaging of the implant to be able to deliver the final restoration. And again, that may happen on cases where there's minimal tissue changes. Other cases, you are going to have to take an impression of the implant, some sort of imaging of the implant at healing. So even though I'll typically plan a lot of my posterior cases with a custom healing abutment, and at the time of surgery, surgery, I'll place that custom healing abutment and send my patient off to heal like this. I do often like to plan also to have a abutment and a temporary crown. And the huge advantage of that is that at the time of surgery, even though my patient's going to leave with a custom healing abutment specifically for, for a posterior tooth, I'll be able to try on my abutment and my temporary crown and really I'll get a first look at the time of surgery of what my final restoration is going to look like. I basically got a preview of whether or not my core file is going to work. So on this case, I can see where my margin is. I had very little tissue manipulation. This was done with a punch. So there's a high probability that after this patient finishes healing, I'll simply be able to use my abutment remill a final crown instead of the PMMA crown and my patient will not have to have any additional imaging. So I hope you got a feel for the Azento workflow and we can see there are multiple different workflows and options available whether or not we're using a custom healing procedure or if we're doing a procedure that's going to deliver a, a abutment and temporary crown. Thank you very much.